Good afternoon. I hope everybody's well today. Uh, it's Thursday and I wanted to get back to uh, doing some music for Thursdays today. Um, I um, had been thinking about uh, the hymn Amazing Grace and thought I would read uh, the story behind that hymn for you uh, as a devotion. And then I have a uh, movie recommendation based on that and then um, I'll post a version of the music on our Facebook page. So this story about the hymn Amazing Grace is entitled, A Slave Captain Writes of God's Amazing Grace. John Newton, who wrote the hymn, an obscure minister in the Church of England, wrote this simple, unsophisticated hymn for the working people of Olney, a small village in the county of Buckinghamshire, where he served. His congregation consisted largely of lace makers in the community where the world famous Buckinghamshire bobbin lace was made. Though Newton wrote it when he was in his early 50s, the hymn reflects the fascinating story of his life. His mother died when he was six. He went to sea with his sailor father when he was 11 and he was in the British Royal Navy on a man of war when he was 17. Abandoning his early religious training, he became an aggressive atheist and delighted in shocking people with his profanity. First a sailor on a slave ship, he later became a ship's captain engaged in transporting slaves from Africa to ports where they could be sold for the best prices. Throughout his early turbulent life, the memory of his mother and his love for Mary Catlett, who later was his wife, served as strong and continuing influences. On a stormy night on a waterlogged ship in 1748, as he faced imminent death, Newton had an extraordinary and genuine spiritual experience. Six years later, he abandoned the sea and became the tide surveyor in Liverpool. He was responsible for checking all ships that entered the harbor for contraband goods. While John and Mary Newton were living in Liverpool, John developed a deeper interest in spiritual matters and felt the Lord's call to the ministry. Because of his lack of university training, the bishops of the Church of England were unwilling to ordain him. Only the intervention of an influential patron secured for him his ordination and appointment to the parish church at Olney where he, when he was 40 years of age. 17 years later, he went to London as minister of St. Mary Woolnoth Church, which was located in the heart of London's banking district. He remained there for 27 years. Never did he lose his bluff sailor ways, but his genial manner and straightforward preaching won him many friends and endeared him to the people to whom he ministered. Newton preached almost to the end of his 82 years. When he was no longer able to read and was advised by his friends to give up preaching, he replied, what, shall the old African blasphemer stop while he can still speak? Today, his words about God's amazing grace are sung around the world. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. That story always um, adds a lot to the hymn whenever I sing it. Um, and there's also a movie entitled Amazing Grace uh, that is um, got quite a cast of well-known actors. Um, Eon Grefflet is in it. I probably pronounced his name wrong. Um, Albert Finney is in it and plays John Newton. Um, it's about Wilbur, Wilbur Force and uh, his work in England uh, to end slavery and uh, the character of John Newton comes up 
in this uh, movie as well. So if you have a chance to get a hold of that and watch that, um, it's an excellent, excellent watch. So I wish you all well today, and I do wish you God's amazing grace in the midst of this time. God's grace that saves all, that saves all of us in the midst of um, things that we don't do quite as God would want us to do. So trust in that amazing grace. And I will post a version of the hymn on our Facebook page. And if you get a chance to grab that movie, please enjoy it. God's blessings to you.